All right, I gotta talk kind of fast because I want to make this before I go to work, and I gotta go in like 15 minutes. Um, and also, I'm a little worked up because I just made fun of the cops to their face. So I'll tell you more about that in just a second. So uh, I got this. This is from this show called Nathan for You. Okay, it's a, it's basically a reality prank show. This guy, he goes around and helps businesses, but he really what he's just doing is just trying to humiliate them and make fun of them, basically, right? Um, yes, it's on Comedy Central, your CC, your 33, your Saturn Cube, um, but uh, this is the newest episode, and he was trying to help this, this dating website get more business, and uh, I just want you to hear, there's these, you like the red and blue chairs, by the way, and all the cubes in the back, um, I just want you to hear what this lady says. Began to open up. If two planes brought down the two towers, uh -huh. I could see that as being feasible, okay. but what brought down building number seven? Building number what? Building seven. Is that what she said, dummy? Did she say the Pentagon or did she say Building 7? So you see, and that's it. There's no lead up to it. There's no mention of it afterwards. They're just, you know, just showing some video footage of these people on this date because he's trying to help this dating website. And then that's it. They just sprinkled that little bit in there. Isn't that neato? You like the cubes behind them too, the red and blue chairs? Ain't that cool? So, it, and it, it doesn't surprise me one bit this guy has no idea what she's talking about, Building 7, because they rewrite history. You remember when this story broke recently? The more important story is the one with historical implications that boldly asks why within the hollowed walls of a $700 million museum complex that allegedly exists to preserve the record of events is there not one mention of the catastrophic, catastrophic destruction of World Trade Center Building 7. So they have this huge 9-11 memorial museum and not one mention of the World Trade Center Building 7. Because they rewrite history so people don't learn stuff because they don't research on their own and they don't ask questions. So I absolutely believe this guy has no clue what she's talking about. So I just wanted to share that because it completely, ca completely caught me off guard. So uh, anyway, about making fun of the cops with their face because it was fun because I like to do it every now and then because it's real hard to, to keep everything inside. And I don't have any video proof of it. I wish I do, but people uh, are dead. But anybody who's been watching me for a while knows I just got arrested last year and I've got no trouble talking smack to the cops. So, But by the way, I got arrested in case you haven't been around that long. I got arrested for going to uh, the bank and asking a question, and I had a video camera with me, and that's it. It wasn't turned on, wasn't aimed at anybody, I just had it with me, and uh, they arrested me for it. But I got the case, dis uh, case dismissed, got everything completely dropped. At the end of the day, it cost me 30 bucks, and uh, that's it. I got to cuss the cops, I got to call them dumb, I got to call them all sorts of stuff. How they, I knew what they were doing, I knew what was coming, I knew how they were in on it, and how they didn't care, they didn't serve and protect anybody but a bunch of foreign banksters. So it felt pretty good. But uh, so today, they every once in a while, they rope off our entire, entire neighborhood for a race, and they make it almost impossible to get out and go anywhere. So I actually was able to get out with a little bit of trouble, but not much. But the way back was the problem, because it wasn't the same way as when I left. So whenever I tried to come back the same way, it was all roped off. So I had to go around four or five different places. And after about the fourth or fifth time where I couldn't get home, I finally ran up to a roadblock and told the cops, I'm like, hey, man, I live on the street. How do I get home? And so they told me, well, just pull up here, and whenever the runners quit running by, we'll let you through. So I pull up to this little roadblock here where they got these, this real close side street all roped off. And we had a, I had a couple people on the right, so on the passenger side of the car. They're all standing around cheering on the runners. And I had two cops on the left side, on the driver's side. So I rolled down the passenger side window. And so these guys, the, the people could hear it to it, or could, could hear it too. And I said, boy, this place is locked down better than the border. Ha, 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 ha fake laugh like that then I quit real fast it's funny nothing out of the cops nope they didn't seem to like that too much and the people on the other side they laughed until they realized it was a fake laugh and I was just making fun of them so it felt pretty good didn't accomplish anything but you know I can't help it it's hard to keep this stuff in all the time I gotta let loose every now and then that's why we have sort of a stockpile of money saved back just in case Tony does something stupid so <laughs> that's what that's the in case Tony does something stupid fund so uh <laughs> It's true. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Sorry I talk so fast, but I'm limited in time, and I'm kind of worked up because I just made fun of the cops, and it was funny. So see you later. Thanks to all my teammates and subs out there. See you in the next video. Bye, bye, bye.